Today I have the pleasure of having two international rare earths or critical material experts. I have Guillaume Pitron, who's currently in France. Is that correct? It's correct. I am in the south of France, uh, in the Provence area. Oh. And of course, we have our Jack Lifton, who is one of our absolute famous, who's of course based in Michigan. How are you today, Jack? Well, I'm fine, Tracy, but I'd rather be in Provence than in Michigan, but that's the way it goes. <laughs> For everybody out there in Investor Intel, you may not be aware of the fact that Guillaume Patron has written a book called The Rare Metal Wars. So this debate is called The Rare Metal Wars. So we're going to hit hard with the first question out of the box. We're going to take turns asking you both questions. Guillaume, as you're our guest, we're going to start with you. Uh, we'd like to start by, I just finished doing an interview with Henry Weingarten from the Astrologers Fund, and he's calling Donald Trump as the presidential winner again this fall. Can you tell us how that's going to affect the global, the impact on rare earths uh, internationally, or will it? Uh, I just want to make sure I got your question. Uh, Donald Trump may win the presidential elections in November. That's what I got, right? Yes, that's correct. And how will that impact the rare earths market? Um, well, first, I, I must say that uh, Donald Trump has already uh, very much impacted the rare earths market and the critical metals uh, market for the last years, because he's the president in the United States who has been tackling the issue as no one ever did before uh, as a president. And I think that's a good thing. We might say whatever we think about Donald Trump, but I think the good thing about him is that he's been putting the issue to the politics, he's been understanding this issue uh, very well, and he's trying to tackle it as much as he can. And of course, that's going to have an impact on the production of rare earths and critical metals uh, in the United States. Uh, um, such not such a big production, but still, it's an important uh, fact to be to be raised. And if uh, he is re-elected, well, I believe that that's gonna uh, go on in this direction. I think he doesn't want to have the United States dependent on China for these critical metals for the defense industry. And we can believe that he's gonna push, politically speaking, he and his administration to make sure that, well, you know, we can try to extract some minerals from the ground, try to refine them on the U.S. soil, and also try to have a, a more lively uh, magnet industry. So, all in all, I must say that, uh, uh, you know, uh, Trump, in my view, is doing a good job on this specific uh, issue and that if he's re-elected, it's going to impact in a good way uh, the U.S. production of uh, rare earth minerals and rare earth metals. And, of course, Jack, what would you like to add or what are your thoughts on this topic? I agree completely. It's putting aside which political party someone's in. Donald Trump has had more influence on the rare earths industry in, in the U.S. and probably the world than any president before him because he's actually the first president to pay attention to this in, in, in the light of his larger uh, interest in critical metals production being brought back to North America from, from not only China but other places which uh, he considers less friendly. The fact is... Donald Trump is our first, let's say, nationalist president in, in, in most of your lifetimes, not mine, because I was alive when Franklin Roosevelt was president, and, and you may have thought of him as an internationalist, but he was quite interested in America first, as was Harry Truman. But after that, it became uh, the policy of the United States, as started by Harry Truman, was to basically, excuse the word, control the world so that the United States would never get into a war as it had just gotten into. And Trump is the first president since then to refocus on, on globalization. And he's trying to deglobalize critical materials for the security of the United States. You don't have to agree with that policy. That is his policy. And it's the most interest in the, Guillaume's exactly right, the most interest in this sector I have seen in my working lifetime. 
So you know where I'm going next then, since this is the rare metal metals war. Um, let's talk about, I'm going to give you a twofold question, both of you. And Jack, I'm going to let you lead on this. Everybody forgets what happened to the capital markets when the increasing tensions occurred between China and Japan and the Dionysius Islands. Now, we know this can come out of nowhere, and all of a sudden, we have an increase of interest in rare earths. So I'd like to discuss what may potentially happen with an increasing tension between Japan and China. And then I'm going to have you take on the big one, which is increasing t tensions between China and the United States. Jack. First of all, Japan is, is much more invested in, into China than even the United States. The United States is, is sort of doing this um, in a secondhand basis. We really, the, the magnet companies that provide us our military, for example, with materials, are really Shinetsu and Hitachi, the two large, very large Japanese firms. They in, they, in turn, are doing most of their production in China. And, and I remember when the 2012 situation occurred, I was told in Japan that we would, by Hitachi, we, would, we will never allow... Our, our top secret proprietary processes to be done in China. Okay, now they're entirely, almost entirely done in China. But the Japanese government has promised its, its high-tech industry billions of dollars to reshore, to bring, bring those industries back to Japan, or at least to countries that, that Japan considers friendlier. That's another discussion. I can't imagine why Malaysia or Vietnam would consider Japan friendlier, but to, jet, to, to the Japanese industry, they are. The United States is in the same boat, and there's something happening right now, Tracy, that really intrigues me. The Chinese have said, and they've identified Grumman industry, American, as one they, they plan to cut off from all rare earth materials because of whatever Grumman has done or said. And what Americans don't seem to be paying attention to, Grumman is the producer of the F-35 fighter plane, the greatest air superiority weapon in history. It's, it's the, Korea is building its first aircraft carrier just to field its F-35s, but Grumman needs those rare earths to build those planes. So this is going to bring real pressure on the Defense Department. This is just happening now. And we don't know what's going to happen. The Chinese have openly said we're cutting off from it. 